Over a hundred years ago, Bram Stoker created a monster that still claims victims to this day. A ravenous hunter with an insatiable appetite for blood. He can transform himself into a bat, a wolf, or even disappear in a cloud of mist. And everyone who meets him falls under his irresistible spell. <laughs> Count Dracula is coming to truth or scare, and nothing can stop it. In 1997, Bram Stoker wrote a horror novel about a Romanian count with a taste for human blood. It wasn't a huge success at the time, and it didn't make him rich or famous. But over the years, the Dracula legend has grown to epic proportions. What you might not know is that Stoker was inspired by some of the real people and events from his own life. I'm here to uncover the facts behind the fiction. And now, the real story of Count Dracula. Evil comes in many forms, but there's never been a monster more terrifying than the Count from Transylvania. In 1922, he came to life on the big screen in the German film Nosferatu, the first of many adaptations. Of course, the most famous will always be... I am Dracula. Bela Lugosi. The novel starts off with a character named Jonathan Harker, a young British lawyer. He leaves his home in England to deliver some papers to a mysterious client, a count who lives in Eastern Europe. When Harker asks directions to the castle Dracula, he gets a dramatic reaction from the local villagers. They beg him to turn back. For your mother's sake. It is a chilling plea. Harker is entering unknown territory, but he refuses to let local superstitions keep him from doing his job. The Count seems to be a considerate host, at least, and wealthy. He sends a carriage to bring Harker to his estate. How considerate. At the stroke of midnight, they pull up to the castle. Harker knocks at the door. And the nightmare begins. Welcome to my home. Harker can see there's something odd about his client, but he doesn't suspect the truth until... Exploring the castle one day, he finds his host asleep in a coffin. Only then does he realize Count Dracula is a vampire. Stories about the dead coming back to life are told all over the world. Some of these legends actually started from historical facts. Dr. Leonard Wolf explains. The particular image of the vampire we have rises out of Slavic folklore. Uh, and it has its origins in the real lives of real people who, in an age when you could not tell when people were absolutely dead, sometimes buried people who were simply in a catatonic stupor. Sometimes the victims would wake up trapped underground. In desperation, they clawed at the inside of their sealed coffins, screaming for their lives. Later, when they were found with blood on their hands and faces, a myth 
was born. Stoker made the myth much larger than life, or death. His fictional vampire can practically defy gravity. The Count is superhuman and, at the same time, a beast. Author David Skull says this is a reflection of the fear that people had of a strange new idea that came out in Stoker's day. Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. One of the most revealing images in Dracula is that moment where Jonathan Harker looks down and sees Dracula emerge from the window and crawl down the face of his castle, becoming a, a lizard or a bat, literally going down the evolutionary scale. Bloodthirsty predators of the night come out to feed, and they're not fiction. When Truth or Scare continues. Your adventure continues when Discovery Kids comes right back after these messages. Are you ready for a real scare? <laughs> Only Discovery Kids has a brand new spooky series about how reality can be stranger than fiction. It's a show where real kids get real scared. Wolves, vampires, haunted castles. Are they truth or scare? Watch Truth or Scare Friday nights at 8, 7 central. Hosted by Buffy the Vampire Slayer's Michelle Trachtenberg. Truth or Scare on Discovery Kids. It's your world. Be very afraid of it. Now stay tuned for more real adventures right here on Discovery Kids. One of Dracula's best tricks is turning into a bat. It's just one of the ways the Count terrifies his victims and escapes when he needs to. There's something even scarier out there. Real vampire bats. And they drink real blood. Long before Dracula, bats had a fearsome reputation. In mythology, they would symbolize evil, the enemies of light. But common vampire bats don't compete with the Count. They won't bite your neck or suck your blood. Instead, they feed on livestock and other animals. After making a quick bite, they lick up the blood as it gushes from their prey. Jonathan Harker is the victim of a much more dangerous kind of vampire. He's a prisoner in Castle Dracula. And can find no way out. There's one room that he still hasn't searched, a place that the Count has forbidden him to enter. And Dracula says, whatever you do, don't go in this room. Stay out of this room. Of course, Jonathan immediately goes to this room to find out what's going on. The room seems to be empty. Then, Harker is suddenly overcome with sleep. When he wakes up, he finds three female vampires ready to make a meal of him. Then, at the last possible moment, it's Dracula who comes to his rescue. In a way, Harker should be grateful to the Count but he's terrified, powerless, trapped, and completely under Dracula's spell. <laughs> Stoker may have known the feeling himself. For years, he worked for the famous actor Henry Irving, managing his Lyceum Theater in London. Irving was a superstar in his day, and Stoker was impressed. He puts everything second to Irving, including his marriage to Florence Malcolm. When he got his job at the theater, he even canceled their honeymoon. David Skull sees a connection between real life and fiction. You can almost envision the, the Lyceum Theater as kind of Castle Dracula, in which Stoker is, you know, trapped for decades at the beck and call of his own personal vampire in the form of Henry Irving. Dracula might have been partly based on Henry Irving. But Stoker must have also known about a certain murderous ruler from the history of Eastern Europe. He lived 500 years ago in Romania, Transylvania to be exact. They called him the Devil, or in Romanian, Dracula. He was Vlad the Impaler. 
Vlad would terrorize his enemies with a uniquely cruel torture. He'd impale them on a wooden stake and then eat his dinner nearby while they slowly bled to death. This is the face of the tyrant known as Dracula. In Stoker's story, Castle Dracula is Jonathan Harker's prison. The Count leaves him there and sails for England. Sleeping all day below decks, the vampire comes out of his coffin at night to feed on the sailors. Dracula docks the ship at the village of Whitby. There is where the Count finds Harker's fiance, Mina, and her best friend, Lucy. Since he's been away, Mina has barely heard from her boyfriend. She can only wonder what's been keeping him. She's about to find out. Mina and Lucy are very different types of girls. While Mina's serious and competent, Lucy's a little more flighty. In just one week, Lucy has gotten three different marriage proposals. She chooses the aristocrat, Arthur, to be her husband. But competition has arrived from Transylvania, and Lucy cannot resist. When her friend goes missing one night, Mina finds her in the cemetery on a bloody rendezvous with Dracula. Lucy! Now that Lucy has felt Dracula's bite, her life will never be the same. It's the cruelest trick of the vampire's curse. His victims become predators themselves. Now, Lucy's friends and loved ones will have to face their own fear and a new kind of enemy. The men of England are running scared from something even more dangerous than vampires, the women's liberation movement. When Truth or Scare returns. Your adventure continues when Discovery Kids comes right back after these messages. Welcome back. Our story so far. The Prince of Darkness is terrorizing England. His latest victim lies sick in bed. Could Lucy rise up from her bed? A new woman? A vampire? It's no surprise that Stoker was thinking about strong female characters that threatened the system. While he was writing Dracula, the women's liberation movement was starting right outside his door. Lucy is fading. Desperate for a way to help, her friends turn to the medical expert, Dr. Van Helsing. When Van Helsing examines Lucy, he immediately decides she needs a transfusion. But nothing helps. When night comes, Dracula empties Lucy of every drop the men have given her. Finally, her strength fails. Her life is over. And the horror is just beginning. The next time the men see Lucy, she's walking through the cemetery undead and hungry. Her victims? Any people she can find. Lucy has become a vampire. Only one thing can stop her. For Lucy and Arthur, it was supposed to be their wedding night. Instead, a very different kind of ceremony will take place. The men arrive at her crypt, the tomb where she sleeps during the day. The only way to let Lucy rest and stop her from killing again is to drive a stake through her heart. It's Arthur, her own fiance, who does the job of hammering in the stake. Do I even have to say it? Never try this at home. It's the battle of the sexes, Gothic style. In the late 1800s, the world was a very different place especially when it came to equal rights for women. At the time that Dracula was written, things were starting to change. Early feminists were taking it to the streets, organizing and protesting for the same opportunities that men had. The new woman is what they called any female who was a part of the movement. Bram Stoker didn't see women as equals. His version of the new woman was Harker's girlfriend, Mina. She's described as being an amazing typist. Big deal. 
Victorian women wanted the right to be the boss, not just the secretary. Dracula doesn't have a lot of respect for Mina either. He finds her in London and appears in her room as white mist. When he takes human form, he drinks deeply from her neck. Parker has escaped the castle of Dracula and returned to England, but he's no match for the Count. One night, the men burst into Mina's room. Parker is lying there unconscious as Dracula feeds Mina blood from his own heart. He's turning her into a vampire. Now it's up to the men to save Mina. Next, the final showdown between the Victorian gentleman and the Prince of Darkness. And Truth or Scare returns. Your adventure continues when Discovery Kids comes right back after these messages. In Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula is not only frightening because of his powers. He's from Transylvania. And in the 19th century, just being a foreigner was very scary to some people. So we return to our story as the vampire slayers are on a mission to save both their friend Mina and their entire country. The key is the dirt that Dracula has to sleep on. He brought it from his homeland and hid it in different spots around London. To chase him out of the shadows, the men in Stoker's novel search out his supply of native soil. Without a place to sleep, Dracula can't survive. The plan? Destroy all of the Count's resting places. If they can do it, he will have to return to his homeland. When they find each box, Dr. Van Helsing blesses the earth, sterilizing it so the Count won't be able to sleep there anymore. Van Helsing knows that this is no ordinary killer. If Dracula wins, he'll keep turning people into vampires everywhere he goes. Elizabeth Miller thinks Stoker took real events and reworked them for his own purposes. Dracula can be read as a novel about British feelings of supremacy at the end of the 19th century, coupled with a distrust and a hatred and a fear of foreigners. At the end of the 1800s, there was a wave of Europeans moving to England. A lot of the English were unhappy about this. It's possible that the fear of Dracula was not too different from the way some people felt about the new immigrants. While most of the Europeans who came at that time made their homes in England, the vampire ran for his life. The men and Mina chase him back to Transylvania, where the drama builds to a fever pitch. Stoker, as if he was a major film producer or film director, organizes the chase so that there's the coach, there are the horsemen, and there's Dr. Van Helsing with Mina. The three of them are converging on Dracula's castle. As the sun sets and the wolves start to howl, the horror story becomes an action movie. Suddenly you're in this John Ford Western in this mountain shootout. As the sun just goes down, the men converge. Dracula leaps up. And Quincy Morris drives him through the heart with a buoy knife. When he's stabbed, Dracula gets a look of peace on his face and crumbles to dust. But is he dead? It just doesn't sound right. He's probably not crumbling to dust at all. He's just turning to moonbeams the way vampires can and sort of floating away when they think they've killed him because you obviously can kill Dracula with a bowie knife. That's silly. Even though they didn't use the right tool for the job, the story of Dracula does have a happy ending. The Count turns to dust just the way vampires are supposed to. Mina is freed from the curse and lives happily ever after with Jonathan and their son, Quincy. Stoker's own life didn't have such a storybook ending. Only his mother truly appreciated what he had done in his novel. 
She wrote to him that it was his best work, and one of the very best horror stories of all. Bram Stoker died the same week that the Titanic sank. For all the hoopla about the shipwreck, most people missed his obituary. But it's hard not to wonder, did the great writer have something else in store for Jonathan Harker's family? In a final journal entry, Harker described returning to visit the Castle Dracula with their son. He said, it was almost impossible to believe that the things which we had seen with our own eyes and heard with our own ears were living truths. Every trace that had been was blotted out. That's what he thinks. Dracula is a long way from being blotted out. There has never been a creature in history or fantasy that compares to the Count. The master of our darkest fears, wild beasts, the night, torture, death. Dracula is every nightmare rolled into one. And what about Bram Stoker's novel? Was he secretly planning to bring his monster back someday? Maybe Stoker never really meant for Dracula to die. That would explain why it was a hunting knife that supposedly finished him off. Well, one thing I know. No matter how many times he's killed, Count Dracula will always return. Harker, you fool.